and gives a short overview of our experience in post-harvest. It's, of course, not all because we cannot <coughs> put all in this presentation, but uh, the main uh, uh, studies and experiments that are uh, connected to our project and the theme of our project. Uh, here I mentioned all people you know uh, who actually we are the only one in our department that are uh, looking and uh, that are uh, having some post harvest uh, experiments and uh, so first uh, about uh, post harvest uh, fruit loss in Croatia in our experience uh, the most uh, the biggest problem of post-harvest fruit loss is uh, our high perishability of fruits, especially uh, berry fruits uh, and uh, non-climateric fruits that uh, cannot uh, usually cannot uh, have a long-term uh, storage. Uh, of course, decade that's uh, connected with pre-harvest, and uh, of course, in uh, storage rooms you cannot make the fruits better either the quality, either the health uh, care of the fruits, but you can uh, try to uh, have it on the same level as at harvest. Uh, Marta Mari something says about the, in the last presentation about the decay and uh, the most usual pet pathogens I will mention also, but not so detailed <laughs> because no, I'm not with the pathologist, so. Uh, and uh, of course, water loss uh, uh, from the fruit that's uh, regarding to the loss of uh, uh, in uh, fruit weight during the storage. Uh, in Croatia, estimated post harvest loss, post harvest loss is 30 to 40 percent. That's uh, according to our uh, studies, but uh, also in uh, you need a United Nations uh, Industrial De Development Organization. And they also have similar uh, projections uh, that even <coughs> in Western more uh, countries that, that are more developed, that uh, post harvest loss is uh, about 20%. So we have uh, some space to uh, be better in this way. and. Uh, fruit production in Croatia, so we have some uh, uh, some sizes about the problems that we have. Is uh, of course apple is the main uh, fruit crop with about uh, seventy thousand tons per uh, per year. Uh, after that are citrus fruits, mainly the mandarin uh, uh, citrus dicolata. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, olive trees, of course, also at the seaside, and after that we have plums, cherries, and some other stone fruits as uh, peaches and nectarines. Uh, causes of post-harvest loss of fresh fruits are, of course, mechanical damage during or, or uh, in orchard, so pre-harvest, or during manipulation in after-harvest management, uh, post-harvest management. Uh, second uh, cause is foliage because of fungi, pathogenic fungi or bacteria, and of course insects uh, or some other organisms. The main problem here is that maybe uh, visually the fruit is healthy when we bring it to the uh, storage room, but uh, because of lack of knowledge in pre-harvest, uh, usually uh, we bring, with the fruits, we bring uh, uh, some spores or uh, some other uh, problems from the orchard to the uh, storage room. Uh, of course, uh, problem one problem of uh, post-harvest loss during storage is physiological disorders that we, uh, we have with inadequate uh, storage uh, atmospheres or treatments uh, and of course all that we can summarize 
with uh, inadequate handling at, and storage at logistic and distribution center, uh, or in, uh, lack of knowledge of technologies uh, in the part of post-harvest uh, treatments or post-harvest management. <coughs> Here we can see some uh, pictures of the problems that we uh, had and that we are we tried to manage uh, in our uh, studies, chilling injuries uh, on Mandarin or also superficial skull uh, that could be also be kind of chilling injury at uh, uh, at Apple Granny, granny Smith, uh, sorry, Granny Smith during storage. Of course, bitter pit that is uh, main problem uh, started with in orchard but developed during the uh, storage and decay uh, because of uh, some uh, various pathogens that are uh, present. Of course, some others are uh, also decay and physiological disorders. Uh, with different uh, types of symptoms or problems and shriveling according to the fruit uh, loss in uh, water uh, compound. So uh, that, uh, that fruit, because of its appearance, it's not good for consumers. Uh, so we can uh, say that that's the total uh, loss of this fruit because, uh, because maybe it can be good for something uh, for some kind of uh, uses but uh, consumers don't like when they say see the shield food so some kind of storage is martha would probably be very happy I saw her yesterday in Orchard, she was yeah, happy with yeah. the <laughs> box, but here you, you can have more uh, problems. See? Uh, so the problem is with bulk packaging uh, without uh, during storage, uh, it would be, uh, of course, best if the packaging and uh, classifying the fruits would be before storage, so the fruit is uh, will be would be picked that are uh, better healthy uh, with no damage so of course after that uh, you can have and uh, better storage uh, possibilities of uh, fruits and some foods that show at that uh, stage some problems still can be used in another uh, way or for juices or uh, some gems or something that uh, in the start of uh, noticing some problem of decay or physiological disorders uh, in processing maybe uh, in that phase it's not so uh, big problem but of course for the fresh consumers uh, for fresh consuming it's a bad uh, problem but of course at the harvest we have human factor uh, you cannot uh, always find a good people, good har harvester that will have uh, enough attention during harvest. Maybe they will uh, just throw away uh, fruits in the basket, and not to put it easily. So you have uh, always that human factor that it's present. Of course, you would like to have it. <laughs> the brain <laughs> yeah, yes, but that's the problem. Disaster. Uh, here we have pictures from one uh, logistic and distribution center uh, of a big company in Croatia that has a big retailer uh, net, uh, and that's so we can uh, look that big companies also uh, makes big mistakes. Here you have in the same uh, storage room, different crops and products. That's of course not good. Uh, there are excuses, okay, but that is just for a few days because now we uh, all collect it here and then we spread it among 
our creation, uh, uh, retailer shops. Uh, but of course, even for uh, short term storage, you have to have uh, different and uh, uh, storage for each crop or you can mix it only those crops that are in products that are compatible with the same type of storage and with uh, uh, at, um, with least uh, influence on another crop that is also storage in the same room. Also, we found the climateric and non-climateric foods next to each other uh, in the same room. Of course, it's not a good thing. Loading and unloading space at logistic uh, center also it doesn't have temperature control, doesn't have humidity, humidity control. And the problem was put it on the truck. It waited here for a few hours. It's, and every hour of uh, inadequate uh, storage and handling is important in post-harvest management. So the key problems that we can see in uh, uh, post-harvest management here in uh, Croatia is the lack of adequate storage capacity. Uh, we don't have enough storage storage rooms and also their uh, size is not uh, adequate for the fruit production or other uh, plant productions that uh, should be stored. Uh, lack of knowledge in commercial practice for about uh, in the field of post harvest management, especially in environmental friendly treatments and uh, ways of handling. Uh, unfortunately, even we are dealing with uh, post harvest problems uh, in the last 15 years in our department, still the cooperation between us and commercial uh, is, uh, role players are on the low uh, levels, we often uh, talk, talk to them, we uh, try to give them some advices and uh, try to establish some uh, cooper uh, cooperation, but the problem is always money. They would like to have a free, uh, uh, free advice that it's not that uh, usually a problem, but the problem is that uh, they don't want even to cover the cost that we have about trying to find the, the cause of their problems or uh, even if we find that, that uh, cause it's for them, I don't understand why, they, they don't uh, understand that uh, their uh, financial uh, interest is that they try to resolve it uh, because low input financial in resolving problem will in uh, output and give them a great benefit but they don't understand they just see how many how much money they need to yes. give for resolving some problem <laughs> and of course slow implementation of eu standards of quality uh, most of that implementation goes in two ways one is uh, before we start uh, joined the european union uh, one way was just for the products that were going to the eu market uh, and uh, another is just in administration on paper we implemented it but in real uh, cases uh, more, uh, it's often that those regulations are not uh, fulfilled and uh, th there we have some problem. So, of course, when inspection comes, we ha they have one or two weeks writing all papers, all, <laughs> all uh, reports that they have to have for the inspection, but the problem is that they don't do it as they should during the whole year. So, solutions would be networking with uh, other uh, researchers and of course 
with the uh, commercial uh, sector, trying maybe the day in commercial sector also uh, try to connect, but they are in the same studies. So in post harvest, we started, well, Professor Yemlich started with a uh, scout, superficial scout on Granny Smith Apple during his uh, specialization at Volcani Center. Uh, after that, he continued uh, that here, and uh, that's how the post harvest sector started uh, at our department. So, superficial scalp is a physiological disorder, but uh, it's caused with pre harvest, well, uh, wrong harvest date. That is the most common reason. Uh, even if it's not a problem of internal quality decrease in apple. The problem is of visual decrease in quality, and uh, of course, nobody likes Granny Smith or any other other apple that has uh, such uh, spots or color. Uh, in the past, uh, diphenylamine was very successful, and it's su successful today. Uh, in decrease of uh, this problem, but uh, in European Union and also in Croatia, uh, before our uh, joining uh, European Union, it's forbidden, uh, mostly because he, uh, he's a cancerogenic influence on people. Uh, in the uh, United States, it, it's still, uh, as I know, uh, it's allowed, and they, they are trying to uh, and to make it uh, also so again in Croatia, uh, in uh, European Union market, uh, but still we have enough uh, strength to, to resist that. Uh, new uh, way is treating with uh, one methylcyclopropen uh, that's uh, also su successful in this problem and many other problems in climateric fruits. But uh, in Croatia, it's still in not it's not in wide use. A few years ago, maybe one or two years ago, it was finally registered for use in Croatia. Uh, but uh, storage rooms didn't accept it very well because they don't know what is is it and they think that they don't need it. Uh, and of course, heat treatment can be successful, it's ecologically friendly, so it's not uh, chemical. Uh, one MCP, it's, uh, they says that it's not, it's uh, eco-friendly because, and it's not, there is no uh, concerning with human health, but I suppose that's the problem that they did, uh, that the studies didn't uh, looking in that way. So of course, better and for, uh, Ecological aspect uh, for uh, organically produce of fruits, uh, of course, heat treatments would be better. Uh, so, here are some of our results with joint project with Volcani Center. You can see that uh, here, diphenyl amine was uh, used as another control to see how uh, heat treatments are successful uh, in uh, controlling uh, in uh, superficial scalp in uh, compared with uh, different element. So you can see here that uh, uh, so uh, of course different element had the better control or the be, uh, better the decrease of uh, percentage uh, healthy fruits. Yeah. Well, yes, of healthy fruits. Uh, and the heat treatments, it's pretty close to them. Uh, here are some uh, treatments that have less, but uh, less healthy fruits, but also better than if you don't do anything. If you are trying to look the level of these uh, uh, damaged fruits, uh, you can see that, of course, diphenylamine hadn't any fruits 
uh, or combinated uh, treatment with diphenylamine and heat hot water brush. Sorry, Goran, just, just to explain, this uh, shortage uh, HWB is, stands for uh, hot water brushing. Yes, yes. yes. So, sorry. Ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. So, uh, I suppose hot, that you know, but. Hot water brush, and this is hot water dip, dip. and this okay. is hot air. Treatment. Yes, yes, yes. Thank okay, you. sorry. <laughs> Just tell me if I skip something, uh, no problem. So, uh, we can see that, uh, <coughs> of course, any treatment that had a diphenylamine had no damaged food. But a hot water brush on 60 uh, degrees or maybe hot water dip within 48 uh, degrees uh, hot water had also, uh, in compare with the control, had much, much less uh, of damage food. So uh, that was uh, our signal that hot water and heat treatment can be used uh, for uh, resolving some problems in physiological disorders. Uh, I, I mentioned that harvest date is the biggest problem with superficial scalp. Uh, here we can see uh, the graphical uh, uh, or visualization about uh, that problem. So, uh, just a minute to see. Yes. Uh, well, uh, we had four different harvest dates and uh, compared with, uh, well, treated with the different temperature of hot water dip. You can see that, again, 48 degrees of hot water in all uh, harvest dates uh, was the best uh, treatment and almost had no influence between uh, wrong harvest dates. So, uh, we can conclude that uh, maybe uh, hot water dip can even uh, solve the problem of wrong harvest date or even decrease uh, of uh, appearance, appearance of superficial scalp. Decay, of course, something for Marta maybe. So uh, we tried also uh, some treatment with uh, acetic acid or sodium bicarbonate with uh, in combination with hot water dip, uh, where we found that uh, inoculation just after the treatment had almost no, uh, no effect. But if inoculation of fruit happens uh, 24 hours after treatment uh, with uh, acetic acid, you can see that fruit develops in that uh, 24 hours uh, some uh, resistance to uh, this was, I think, uh, penicillium expansum. Uh, so, uh, if fruit survives uh, 24 hours after treatment, uh, it could, uh, this treatment can help us that uh, we don't have decade during storage. Uh, I don't know. Oh, yes, <laughs> <In the> papers <laughs> uh, that we, about this. So, uh, fruit storage and uh, studies result. Also, here is something on Mandarin. Uh, you saw the picture of chilling injuries. Uh, Mandarin is uh, fruit for short-term storage maybe maximum to 10 weeks, but that is also can be questionable. Uh, heat treatment, also we tried hot water dip and hot air treatment. And we we'll think uh, when we uh, put the fruits on the room's temperature until they uh, uh, had a weight loss of three to four percent. Here you can see that chilling injury, of course, it's more about visual symptoms and uh, visual decrease of quality. Uh, again, consumers don't like 
It's called the Mandarins. We tried also an inoculation again with penicillin uh, SP and uh, when non treated fruit, we had uh, lots of uh, well, well, very fast uh, how do you call it? Uh, develop uh, of uh, penicillin on uh, after five days and with a treatment in hot water just for three minutes in 50 degree degrees the development of a penicillin was very slow compared to quantum. Uh, not just uh, but we wasn't uh, we weren't looking uh, only uh, decay or physiological disorders on fruits, we also looked at the quality of fruits and saw that uh, hot water deep, well, heat treatment uh, can preserve or uh, had less decrease in uh, fruit quality comparing to the control. So that's uh, another uh, important way, uh, well, information because uh, treatment that can solve other problem and make us another problem it's not good treatment here we can see that hot water dip it's a good treatment for few uh, other aspects of fruit also uh, hot water dip uh, showed that uh, chilling injuries was less and on those fruit that we treated with hot water, then uh, with water, uh, with the fruits that weren't uh, treated with uh, hot water. Uh, weight loss, again, in uh, Mandarin is a very juicy fruit, and water is a really a big part of uh, this fruit, and every loss. Uh, in weight, it's very, very uh, big problem uh, at mandarins. So uh, we had different uh, temperatures of storage, and you can see that uh, usually uh, mandarin is stored at three degrees. But if you, uh, if we uh, can store it at one degree, we we will have some uh, less uh, loss in uh, weight. Uh, of course, uh, treated fruit with hot water also had uh, less uh, weight loss than uh, control fruit. So uh, if you compare uh, control fruit of usual storage temperature that three, uh, three degrees and treated made, uh, fruit at one degree, you can see that it's a, a huge uh, difference. Of course, uh, we, you can uh, compare just the, the temperatures or just the, uh, just the heat treatments, but uh, maybe some combination can be better and that's what we got here. Uh, what is the problem with uh, chilling injuries? At nectarines, uh, at, uh, sorry, at mandarins, it's, uh, the problem is that uh, anatomic changes in peel in oil glands uh, it appears, and that's that uh, brown or black spots that you can see with inadequate storage. If you see the anatomic changes, is pretty obvious, depending on on uh, level of uh, level of uh, chilling injury <coughs> degree. So uh, we also work something on strawberry. Uh, of course, they they are very fruit and have has extremely short term storage, maybe few days. Uh, the 
Yes, then Rix, that is a mistake. Sorry, of course, definitely. Please regard this uh, in. Uh, okay. So, uh, fruit is uh, very prone to decay. It's stored for a few days. Uh, as I said, we tried to store it seven days, and of course, only one day uh, of shelf life. Uh, heat treatment. Uh, showed us that preserving quality of stored food can be uh, uh, useful and also uh, modified the atmosphere packing. But uh, we had some problems occurred, uh, occurred that uh, this treatment showed that splitting, fruit splitting and fungal decay. Uh, probably uh, this, the cause of these problems is uh, that uh, heat treatment was uh, used hot water, so uh, probably some uh, water uh, stayed on the fruit and that of course helped the fungi to uh, develop and to uh, damage our fruits. Peach and nectarine, that is maybe the most, impo most important part of uh, for our uh, project, uh, last few years, I think five or six years, we are intensively working uh, in this uh, crop. Of course, sh short term storage, but longer than strawberry. Uh, as we uh, try, four to six week, eight week maybe would be, uh, could be accomplished with. Uh, uh, with controlled atmosphere storage, but uh, we tried normal atmosphere and air uh, heat treatments. Because uh, of that uh, short term storage, uh, it's always questionable if uh, controlled atmosphere can be on or it's economically uh, good for uh, this food. <coughs> of course, uh, two main problems for peach and nectar in during storage is chilling injuries. That's uh, not only uh, visual symptoms, but uh, they deteriorate internal uh, quality and uh, also decay that shows uh, during storage. So decay, just after four weeks, we had no healthy part of the fruit on some fruits and of course fruit with uh, little uh, showing a little uh, deck, uh, area of decay it's not good for consumers but here you can see that we have a big problems with this uh, chilling injury appear uh, their appearance in different ways flesh readiness uh, browning flesh, uh, some uh, wooliness that uh, shows a lack of juice. You can see that the uh, peach is juicy, but you cannot uh, extract the juice from the flesh. And of course, that's also the problem for the uh, consumers because they are used to that. They have juicy fruit that <laughs> the juice will uh, go uh, through their hands when they are trying to eat uh, ripe uh, peach. We also uh, studied the decay. We, under, we tried to uh, manage decay and some uh, phytopathogenic uh, fungi uh, with heat treatments. We got some results and some uh, we, uh, not. Uh, the main problem was Monilia laxa, Botrytis cinerea, Rhizopus solonifer, Penicillin, and Alternaria was in some less. Uh, that uh, and uh, one part of my PhD that will be finished soon, I hope. Uh, uh, one independent remains, so yes, <laughs> public discussion, so it's probably. Great. The best uh, is on the end. Uh, but uh, what uh, was interesting for us that uh, we uh, were 
are looking for uh, baked in fractions uh, and their role in development of chilling injuries. And uh, as uh, literature says that water soluble pectins are the most important for development of chilling injuries, uh, we determined that not only water soluble, but uh, also uh, ammonium oxalate soluble pectin has a great role in these uh, chilling injuries. And of course, you can see the regression of ratio of water soluble pectin and uh, ammonium oxalate soluble pectin on development of chilling injury. Uh, that's something that's not uh, yet uh, investigated enough in the literature. So we hope that we will continue in this uh, way to determine uh, what what is the specific uh, role of pectins in chilling injuries, uh, injuries and how maybe another uh, heat treatment will do uh, with different temperatures can resolve this problem. Uh, heat treatments uh, that I'm not, yes, this is the last slide. Uh, heat treatments uh, we uh, uh, found that it's good for uh, also can be good for uh, fruit quality uh, if you are looking for consumers test because uh, in short term storage hot air treatment showed uh, pretty good uh, in internal quality but if you uh, storage longer it's it was the worst treatment so one treatment can be good for one uh, in terms of storage, but if you want longer storage, maybe that treatment is worse and it should be avoided. So, definitely, post harvest is very uh, spread uh, and big uh, field of uh, research, and it can be pretty tricky <laughs> when you are trying to <laughs> conclude something. Yeah. Thank you for attention. Okay.